Now today we're going to be talking about the core mechanics of Warzone, but before we dive into some general complaints and some concerns, I'd like to start this video on something positive. Because for all its problems and for all its issues with Warzone, there has been a lot that's been generally very positive about this release and this integration, and although things can definitely be improved, I do think Raven Software are doing a really good job of having their ear to the ground and trying to improve the game. And today's post proved that. Today they've announced that the Covert Exfil feature that was part of Season 1 Reloaded is not coming to the game in Season 1 Reloaded. And this was due to fairly overwhelming feedback that the idea of having multiple Covert Exfils in a Battle Royale game was probably not the best idea. Now whilst we're not going to be seeing Covert Exfil in the release of Season 1 Reloaded, they're going to be putting it in a dedicated mode for people to see it in action and try it out first before potentially integrating it into the wider version of Warzone. And I think this is a really positive step and a really positive change, and I think that's a huge thumbs up to Raven Software. Whilst I personally felt Covert Exfil wasn't really going to make a huge difference to the game and was going to be an interesting feature to see how it played out, it's nice to see that they're listening to the criticisms and feedbacks, saying, yep, we see what you're saying, we'll try something else and let us know how it gets on. I think that's a sign of a really different Raven software and a really different Call of Duty to what we've seen before. This is a communications and dev team that are listening to everything that's being said online, they're listening to criticisms and feedbacks, and yeah, I just wanted to start on a positive note, because whilst this video is going to contain a fair bit of criticism about how certain things have been handled, I do want to just generally state that I do think these guys are doing their best at the moment. And the Christmas break has been somewhat of a setback because obviously everybody's on holiday, things aren't being put out properly, there aren't updates coming as frequently as we'd like, but that's just a natural part of the game progression. The first season is always a little bit up and down in places, but already we're seeing some really positive steps. So without further ado, let's dive on into what I'm talking about today, which is the MTZ Interceptor. Now many of you might have been surprised to see that you had to update your client and restart it the other day. And after completing that update, you launched into Warzone expecting the MTZ Interceptor to be in the floor. And you would be incorrect, because it's still extremely powerful, and the nerf was so insignificant it's gone from being a 4 shot kill to a 4 shot kill. They didn't really do a huge amount. On December 14th, they nerfed the Interceptor once, reducing the headshot multiplier to try and make it more balanced. And then again on January 11th, they've nerfed it a second time to try and make it more balanced. And newsflash, generally, if you haven't played Warzone yet, it absolutely isn't in any way, shape, or form. It's still fundamentally broken, and it's still far too powerful. Which means we're going to have to wait until January 17th to see the Interceptor nerfed a third time. Meaning this is going to be the third update of a single weapon to try and make it fit into the actual balance of Warzone and not have a statistical anomaly where it's just insanely powerful and extremely OP. And I think this speaks to a wider issue that Raven Software is having with their design philosophy of Warzone and their balancing philosophy of Warzone. And I want to talk about that today because I think it's going to be a very serious problem heading into the future of the game. Now, before I talk about all of this, it's worth mentioning or caveating this with two things. One, there was a Christmas break, so lots of people went on holiday, the game wasn't updated regularly, and that's to be expected. But the frequency of updates we've had other than that so far has actually been pretty good, and I'm expecting balance to generally be better this time in Warzone. And two, I want to dispel the myth that a lot of people tend to stipulate that Call of Duty deliberately breaks weapons to sell skins. Whilst to some extent it might look like that is the case, and I'm definitely somebody who hasn't exactly ignored the idea before, the reality is very different. First and foremost, the average KD in Warzone is about 0.8, so people are dying more than they're killing people in this game on the whole. Which means that if you get destroyed by a weapon like the MTZ, and you end up being a casual player who doesn't play a huge amount, and you're in and around that 0.8 KD region, you're just getting absolutely wrecked by a gun that you have no concept of, you probably haven't leveled up that weapon a huge amount because you don't play the game that much, and you're ultimately getting dunked on by something that feels busted more than you're being helped by something that feels busted. So with that KD in mind, and the fact that most casual players haven't leveled up these weapons, which actually is very true because you see less of them in lower skill lobbies, 
the idea that this is done to sell skins doesn't make a lot of sense. And on the flip side of that equation, the thing that sells the most skins for most games is player retention. Keeping them playing for an extremely long period of time makes them want to buy things in the game more. And player retention, in my view, absolutely plummets and takes a nosedive whenever a broken meta just deletes people. If you get killed by a fire shotgun in Warzone right now, there's a good chance you're just going to quit because it felt like you couldn't do anything. So with all of this in mind, we have to talk about the balancing situation in Warzone because three updates for a single weapon to work properly is just not okay, especially when those updates span multiple months. And I know that Christmas had an impact on that. But we have to talk about it because I think it speaks to a fairly large failure on behalf of Raven to identify how the game plays and the problems that the game faces. Assuming they nerfed the MTZ properly on January 17th, that will be the third update across about a month's period that it took for them to fix a weapon that's fundamentally broken in the game. Because the MTZ is such a statistical outlier that it is just inherently OP. It's not balanced, it doesn't fit into the game meta, and it dominates the overarching game meta for Warzone. And Call of Duty and Raven Software have regularly said that they want more weapons from more categories to be viable this year in Warzone. And whilst that's a nice idea, the way they're approaching it makes absolutely no sense. Everybody, I think, would agree that it would be better to nerf these weapons in such a way that they're completely taken out of the meta and then buff them back slowly over two or three updates to figure out how they fit in, versus trying to tweak them slightly three times and getting it wrong two out of those three times. And it could be three out of three if they get this update on the 17th wrong. The only way these metas shift in Warzone is if somebody logs in, uses something that was busted, and it feels terrible. And that's just the reality. And whilst I wholeheartedly agree that having variety is a really important thing for Warzone, I don't agree with the fact that we're trying to do these micro adjustments, especially when you consider just how many guns are busted in the game right now. We have the Interceptor, which is insanely overpowered. We have the 762 Polyamyok Conversion Kit, which basically has no downsides as a weapon, which is far too overpowered in my opinion. Whilst it does have good damage drop off and it does need a little bit of tweaking, it is definitely in the category of better than it probably should be. We have the WSP Swarm, which is the most broken gun in the game I think we've had since the Mac 10. I've had a lot of people disagree with me about this, but a 100 round SMG that you can hit fire and kill people instantly with and barely have to aim is not a balanced weapon in Warzone. It should be limited to a 50 round magazine, the high rate of fire should dispel those bullets faster, it should have a higher hip fire spread and a slightly lower minimum damage. That would balance the swarm. But then to make matters worse, we've also got multiple fire shotguns in the game right now, the Haymaker and the Riveter, which basically delete anybody inside a building. And I've explained time and time again that shotguns cannot be a viable option in Warzone because it just means that the second you get inside a building, which is a fair amount of the combat inside Warzone, it's shotgun warfare, it's RNG, it's random, it's who's hip firing who, and the entire game falls apart in the CQB environment. And there are certain weapon categories like shotguns that just can't be good in Warzone. And that's the honest to God truth. Not unless they come with substantial downsides like range limitations, damage limitations, that make them less versatile than they presently are. So we have multiple busted weapons in the game right now, and the process of adjusting these little by little isn't actually changing the meta, nor is it actually fixing some of these statistical outliers, it's just making them ever so slightly less OP than they already were. So to me, the solution is quite clear. They need to start burying these guns into the floor like the Swarm in the MTZ Interceptor and making them terrible to use so that the meta resets and then buff them back up into the game so that they become viable options again for people to rediscover versus the current system of micro-tweaking 155 different weapons to try and make them all fit in. But there are two things that I think Raven Software isn't doing right now that I think would be a huge asset going forward for the future of balance. They need to consider the worst possible scenario, and they need to consider the context of the game. The worst possible scenario for an MTZ Interceptor is that you have four people shooting at you with an MTZ Interceptor, which means you're pretty much going to die instantaneously. And that's a fairly possible outcome considering quads exists, and the same possible outcome is pretty much attainable in trios. 
And they need to bear in mind that weapons that have this severe level of damage output are going to be used in team-based formats. And whilst I'm not saying you should make every gun a marshmallow shooter to appease people who play in team-based modes, you at least need to think about the reality that these things are going to be spam cannoned in such a way that makes them insufferable. The next thing for me is context, and this is really important. Not only in terms of how the game actually plays, but also in terms of how the weapon should handle. The first thing I'm talking about is that we need to understand the majority of gunfights in Warzone happen under 40 meters. We also need to understand that the majority of them happen inside buildings. So when you introduce things like a fire shotgun that makes it impossible to see and also kills you instantly, half of the entire gameplay loop is already in trouble. The second thing is that when you have a gun like the WSP Swarm, which has a 100 round magazine that you can hit fire into a room, again, half of the gameplay loop becomes completely ruined. So the context of how these things are actually used in game is really important. Taking away the WSP Swarm's 100 round magazine and limiting it to 50 would already make it a far more balanced option inside Warzone than it is, even though I do believe it still needs some hip fire changes. But thinking about that context, why aren't we using more metrics to mess with weapons? The Interceptor so far has only had its damage nerfed. Why hasn't the flinch been increased on the Interceptor? Why hasn't the scope sway on the Interceptor been increased? Why hasn't the recoil on the Interceptor been increased? Or the reload speed, the aim down sight speed? All of these are viable options to make this weapon far more balanced, but the only one that's been touched is the damage. And to me, that doesn't make a huge amount of sense. And again, if you think about the WSP Swarm and how that works, the 100 round magazine doesn't make you slow enough. It doesn't slow down your ADS speed enough. It should basically completely ruin your mobility. But they haven't done that with that. And that context of how the weapon's used and what things they could do to make them less viable hasn't come into effect here. And there are so many things they could do for these weapons to make them have balanced trade-offs. Oh, you want to use the MTZ-762, which is a high damage weapon? Great, it's got a 30 round magazine. That makes it balanced. You want to use the TAC Eradicator, which is a fast firing LMG? Great, it's got a hyperburst mechanic that slows down the rate of fire, meaning that it's less effective over longer ranges. And whether it's recoil control, whether it's scope sway, whether it's ADS speed, whether it's mobility, there are so many values that they could mess around with to make viable trade-offs between these weapons exist. And at the moment, they're just not doing enough of that. And for the overall health of Warzone, it would help everybody. For example, a very easy contextual change that they could make to Warzone is that every single scope on the Cat AMR has sniper glint, because it means that every single person who could one-shot down you has to be visibly ADSing, meaning that you would be able to see the glint and react to it thus balancing one-shot snipers in a far more effective manner. It's just little things like that that would make an overwhelming difference to how Warzone plays and feels, and makes the game less frustrating, more balanced, and more viable for the wider community. As always folks, this is just my general rant and ramble about how I feel Warzone should operate and work. I'm interested to hear your thoughts and feelings in the comment section below. As always folks, thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. Drop a like, drop a sub, and I'll see you there.